sir, I want you to give me a complete overview and inspection of the lights and everything on the front of this vehicle. Okay. Checking, the, checking the top of my vehicle, make sure there's no obstruction. Okay. Looking under my vehicle, make sure there's no leaks. Very good. Make, make sure that my truck and my trailer are not stacking from side to side. Okay. Check my clearance lights and my uh, clearance lights and my identification lights. Make sure I'm not scared, not cracked, not broken in. Which ones are clearance and which ones are ID? The two on the outside are clear and the three on the inside are ID. Very good. We were expecting for the defects you just mentioned. That is correct. What is your next step, sir? Next step is to check my mirror. I have the minor secure and I crack my broken. Okay. Clean. I'm going to clean that from both. Okay. Another mirror. So it's probably minor secure and I crack my broken. I'm going to clean that from both and it's clean. Very good. Turn signal, parking light, my four way flash. Okay, I'm sure, pop my steering, I crack my broken, amber color, just enough smoke. Okay, my, my passenger side, headlight, pop my steering, I crack my broken, white, clean, just enough smoke. Okay, driver, anything else you would expect on your initial overview in the front of your truck? There's no damage. Good. That's all I needed to hear. All right, driver, go ahead and open your hood. What is the proper way to open your hood? Three points of contact. One, two, three. We're in need. Okay. It just pop open like that? No, you got to. Well, I'd right. already unlatched oh, the hood. Okay, okay driver, which side of the engine compartment are you going to start on? Very good. Let's move You may begin. Take my full red wire. There's probably my chair in the crack, not broken. Not no visible signs of leaks, filled to the proper level. Half in place. Very good. Take my cooler hoses. No brazen bolts or cuts. Probably my security cracking up broken. I'm missing any nuts or bolts. No visible signs of leaks. Take my internally driven I, air. I'm sorry, driver, let me stop you right there. Yes, There's a lot of questions. Some of these trucks, we have different type engines. Again, you first week. Some of this isn't going to make sense, so just bear with me. But for you third week, all the components are going to be on all of these engines. They may not be in the same place. More than likely, this is the, actually the truck you will test on because I do the majority of the pre-trip and backing tests. So pay close attention to this, but bear in mind, they may not be located in the exact same spots on all the engines. We've got Volvo engines, Mercedes, Detroit, Cummings which is meant different engine manufacturers. I just wanted to throw that in there. If you have a question, you know, now's the time to ask about anything like that. Okay? Everybody understand? But just remember, all components will be on all these engines somewhere. He talked about the reservoir. That is universal. It's all, on all the engines, it's going to be in the same position. The best way to find the water pump, which he was going to go to your air compressor, that's fine. But the best way to find your water pump would be follow your hoses. The coolant goes through the water pump, vice versa. If you have any doubt, follow your coolant hoses that he mentioned. That was how you find your water pump. Okay, driver, please continue. Take my internally driven air compressor, probably my secure, not cracked, not broken, I'm missing any nuts or bolts, no visible signs of leak. Okay? Take my internally driven water pump, probably my secure, not cracked, not broken. No visible signs of leaks and I'm missing nuts and bolts. Driver, can you touch the water pump for me, please? Very good. That just shows me that you do know what you're talking about. You did not memorize the book. All right, driver, you may continue. I'm checking my exhaust. Probably my secure and I cracked not broken. No missing nuts or bolts. No visible signs of leaks. Black soot indicates a leak. Okay, let me say this right at this point in time. A lot of students think that you have to tell me about the turbo. You do not. It is part of the exhaust. I do not have to hear about it. A, you can't check it, everything's internal. B, there's one thing you would look for, it's a sign of a leak, Who? and I know you know it. What is the sign of a leak on an exhaust system, ma'am? Very good, did everybody catch that? I need to hear that when you're taking your test. Oh, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear that. It's soot, black soot. That's a sign of a leak, and the exhaust system is supposed to be completely sealed until the exhaust exits the tailpipe. So if you see any signs of black soot, I need to hear about that, okay? All right, driver, continue, sir. Checking my electrical connectors, electrical wires, make sure I 
you want to hear their problem I secured? I cracked, I broke, I'm not afraid. I'm probably connected. Very good. At this stage, to cover yourself, it would be a good thing to say you're making a general inspection of all belts, hoses, and wires on this side of the engine compartment. Okay? A general, in general inspection of all belts, hoses, Sorry. and wires on this side of your engine compartment. Everybody catch that? Mm -hmm. All right, driver, is there anything else you'd like to tell me about this side of the engine compartment? All right. You want to move to your nose side, correct? Yes, sir. All right, everybody. Please. Let me pause. <coughs> yeah. Let me pause. Go ahead, driver. I'm checking one or two ways to add oil to the vehicle. To the vehicle, my cap's in place. Probably not securing a crack, not broken. Visible signs of leaks. Okay. I'm checking my dipstick. Probably not securing a crack, not broken. To check it, I would pull it out, wipe it off, stick it back in, pull it out again. It should be between the fill and the, uh, between the full and the low one. Correct. Um, it's measured in gallons, not quarts. Right, guys. Did you catch that? Yes, sir. If oil is to be added into one of these engines, irregardless of the manufacturer, oil is always added in these engines in gallons not quartz gallons not quartz everybody catch that all right continue driver checking my power steering reservoirs probably my security not cracked not broken no visible signs of leaks filled to the proper level okay how do i know that driver check it here fill it here very good all right continue all right i'm checking my alternator probably my security not cracked not broken no missing no nuts and bolts okay jam nut is in place and tight Everybody catch that. What's in place? He's jam nut. Jam nut. I need to hear about that when you tell me about your alternator. Remember that. The jam nut is in place. Continue, driver. I'm checking my alternator belt. It's probably my security crack, not broken, not frayed. Can I have no more than three-quarter inch of play? Very good. Three-quarters of an inch of play. That is also something I need to hear. No more than three-quarters inch of play on the alternator belt. If you leave any of those details out, now if you've mentioned the item, I will ask you, drivers, is there anything else you'd like to tell me about that item? But if you don't tell me those key things I need to hear, you will not be credited for the item. Everybody got that? Yes, sir. All right, driver, continue. I'm doing a general inspection. I'm going to brush my hoses and electrical lines, or my um, electrical, electrical wire. Okay. So probably my security not cracked, not broken, um, no freight. Okay. Driver, is there anything else you'd like to tell me about this side of the engine compartment? No. All right, you may continue, driver. Checking my drive, my steering, my steering rod. Yep. Probably my steering and crack, not been all broken, no missing nuts and bolts. Okay. Checking my new joint, or my steering knuckle. Either answer is acceptable. Steering knuckle or universal joint, it's the same thing. Either answer is acceptable. Driver, what defects are you t inspecting on that steering knuckle? That is probably grease. Yep. And no missing? No, no Very good. All right, continue, driver. Checking my gearbox. Okay. Probably my security not cracked, not broken, no missing nuts and bolts, no visible signs of leaks. Okay. Checking my hoses to my gearbox. Very good. Probably my security not cracked, not broken, no abrasions, bolts, or cuts, no visible signs of leaks. Okay. Checking my pitman arm. Yep, probably my secure, not cracked, not broken. Cast nut is in place, not missing a scotter pin. Okay. Check my my drag links. Probably my secure, not cracked, not broken. Not bent, not missing no, no missing nuts or bolts. Correct. Check my uh, tie rod. Probably my secure, not cracked, not broken, no missing nuts or bolts. All right, driver, is there another castle nut and cotter pin back there? Yes, sir, on my steering knuckle. I need to hear about both castle nuts and cotter pins again first weekers you probably some of this isn't going to make sense but i need to hear about both there are two on the steering linkage two castle nuts two cotter pins i need to hear about them both okay continue driver I'm a tie rod. yep check my tie rod. Check what no he said oh check my um my hanger bracket a spring hanger. Okay. Probably my secure, not cracked, not broken. Uh, not missing any nuts and bolts. Okay. Checking my leaf spring. Probably my secure, not cracked, not broken. Can have no more than a quarter. Can be no more than a quarter inch out of alignment. Very good, driver. Checking my U bolts. My U bolts. Probably my secure, not cracked, not broken. No missing nuts or bolts. Okay. Let me stop you right there, driver. U you know, bolts. They're on here. Uh, if you can, 
squeeze in, take a look. Uh, if the driver would, if you'll assist him, let him point to him so you will all know what you're looking at. Take turns and move through if you don't know it. Wait a minute, hold on. Y'all show him the castle nuts and cotter pins? Yeah, yeah I'd like to see Simple. that. Castle nuts, so it looks like a castle. That's your cotter pins. Oh, uh, okay. There's one there, one there. Okay. It's one right. connected to your pivot arm. All right. Into your, um, all right, very good, driver. You make a genius, sir. Sorry. I'm checking my shot. Make sure the father match carrier not cracked, not broken, no visible signs of leaks. Check my upper mount, my lower mount. Probably my secure and I cracked my back, not broken, I'm missing no nuts or bolts. Very good. All right, driver, are you going to move on to your braking system now? Yes, sir. All right, you may continue. Check my air hose, my brake chamber. Probably my secure, there are no brazen bolts or the cuts, no visible signs of leaks. Check my brake chamber. Probably my secure and I cracked, not broken, no missing nuts or bolts, no visible signs of leaks. Check my push rod. A slack adjuster. Probably my secure and I cracked and I broke and I'm missing pins and keys. Okay, driver, if you would let me stop you right there. Uh, while he's here, same thing. Everybody move in. Let him show you. Brake chamber, tap, uh, push rod, and slack adjuster. All right, hose, chamber, push rod, slack adjuster. Okay. You guys can crowd around. He'll be glad to show you. Hose, chamber, push rod, slack adjuster. Rim. Outside rim. Probably my security not cracked, not broken. No illegal welds. Check my inside sidewall, my outside sidewall. No abrasion bolts or cuts. PSI is stamped on manufacturer specification. PSI is stamped on the outside of the tire. Very good. Guys, did you hear that? <coughs> the, there, this is some confusion with students. Most tires will be around 110 PSI. That is not always the case. What, as long as you tell me, pressurized or it's pumped up, it's got the right amount of air, but up to the manufacturer's specifications, which will be located on the outside of the tire. It is stamped. It's not a sticker. It will be stamped there. I do need to hear that. That's very important. If, you, if I don't hear about it, I'm going to ask, driver, is there anything else you would like to tell me about that item? Nine times out of ten, that's what you forgot. That's what most students will forget to tell me. It's the manufactured recommended specifications for the air pressure, or PSI. So okay? I can say PSI specifications to stamp on the outside of the tire. Yes, that would be acceptable. All right, go ahead, driver. I'm taking my my tread, my tread area of my tire. Make sure there's no there's uneven wear, no abrasion bulges or cuts. At yep. least four thirty seconds of tread depth. Four thirty seconds. Four thirty two. I need to hear that number. That is the tread depth. That is the minimum allowable tread depth for DOT, for the inspection. If it's lower than that on a steering tire, you should not drive that truck. Because if you get stopped, or God forbid you have a blowout and have a wreck, and it's found to be that's the cause, that's on you as the driver. Everybody understand that? Yeah, the company carries liability. That will be on you as well and they can come after you personally and they will okay everybody understand all right driver continue now i don't know if you want to hear it or not there must be a virgin tire yes and not be a recap yes okay you want to hear that <laughs> yep that's only steering tire only virgin tire means it's never been capped that's all that means i just need to hear it, it must be a virgin tire and cannot be a recap the steering tire must be a virgin tire yes steering tire only that's only on the front? Yeah, that's okay. on your steering axle. All right, driver, continue, sir. Checking my lug nuts. Make sure probably mine is secure, not cracked, not broken, no rust trails, no shiny threads indicates a loose tire. Could indicate a loose tire. Very good. Check my hub oil seal. Probably mine is secure, not cracked, not bent, not broken, no missing nuts or bolts. To check the level, you stick your pinky in it until it comes up to your first knuckle. Very good. Check my valve stem. Probably mine is secure, not cracked, not bent, not broken, cap is in place. Cap is in place. Everybody catch that. Valve stem. Cap is in place. It's not missing. That's another thing students tend to forget. Do you want to hear how you check the pressure in the air? The, the air pressure He's going to be coming to that. Yeah, he'll get to that. Yeah. Oh. Check, the, check the pressure with an industrial gauge. Yep. Okay. Commercial gauge. Yeah. Do you want to hear that? <laughs> yeah. If you don't say it, I. that's you'll one of the things I would say. Okay. Yeah. And, let me stop you here and let me say, which you'll get these directions before I start your test. I am allowed, as the examiner, to probe you for information. 
I am not allowed to prompt you. Now what the difference is, and I'm going to use this tire for the example, and just what you said. This student mentioned the tire. He told me a lot of information, all of it was correct. There was one thing I still wanted to hear. Since he mentioned that item, I can say, driver, is there anything else you'd like to tell me about that item? He would tell me. Now, had he skipped this item, had he not mentioned it, I cannot say anything about it. That would be prompting him that he has skipped an item. Everybody understand? I can probe you for more information. I can dig for more information on an item that you as the student has already mentioned. I cannot mention an item that you have not. That would be prompting you. That'd be cheating. Everybody okay. understand? So, being that you said that, if you mention everything on that item like that tire, you mention everything, would you still ask that question? No, I'd have no reason to. Okay, because that would mess me up. Yeah, that's a big hint. If yeah, I ask like, you, yeah, up, you know? driver, is there anything else you'd like to tell me about that item? There is something else you need to tell me about that item. <laughs> I'm not going to ask just to hear <laughs> myself talk. <laughs> okay? All right, driver, continue, sir. Take my mirror, make sure it's probably my secure, not cracked, not bent, not broken. It's clean. Take my driver's door handle. Make sure it's closed, my secure, not cracked, not bent or broken, working properly. Okay. Slide by you. Take my driver's window. Make sure it's closed, my secure, not cracked, not bent or broken, working properly. It's clean. Take my weather stripping. You want to hear no brazen bolts are to cut? Yes, no brazen no, no abrasion bolts are to cut. You want to hear it's leaking, whether it's leaking or not, you can't tell it's leaking. Right if it's not raining, you can't tell you. All right, check my fire extinguisher. Make sure it's closed, my secure. Not crack. Well, I mean, probably my secure would be would be sufficient. Yep. If it had a hose on it, no abrasion bulges or cuts, no obstructions. Okay. Okay. It needs to be at least five psi for a combination trailer, ten psi for a uh, hazmat. Psi. I, I'm sorry. BC. 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 Apologize. That's. Oh, I'm sorry, driver. Very important. Five BC. Five BC for a non-hazardous truck. Low. 10 BC for hazardous. I do need to hear that. Everybody understand? Yes, this what? particular truck does not have a hose on it, but some fire extinguishers do. Okay? But that's the main thing I need to hear. Properly mounted and secured. 5 BC for a non hazardous load. 10 BC for a hazardous load. No. Not from security, not missing nuts or bolts. Amber in color. Include. Okay. Driver, is there anything else you want to tell me about this light? The wire. Thank you. It's not wireless. It's not magic. Probably mount security, not afraid. If it's electrical, it's got to have a power source, which means it's going to have a wire hooked to it. Somewhere, if you can see the wire, you need to call it. Okay? Hey, nope, not frayed, properly mounted, and secured. That's all you gotta say. That'll work. And you're gonna tell us what we need to say? Within limits. Yeah. <laughs> Sliding tandem rails, properly mounted, secured. Not missing any nuts or bolts. Locking arm is in the locked position, locking pins in the locked position. Cross members throughout the whole trailer probably mine secure, not missing nuts or bolts. Okay. Not legally welded. Airlines are not hanging. Or more 30, 20, 30 inches on the pound. 18. 18. Technically 17 to 20, but anywhere in there is fine. No abrasion bolts. Guys, did you hear that? No. <coughs> Repeat that. Airlines more than 18 inches above the ground. About 18 inches. Airlines. 17 to 20. The average standard's 18. Probably mount security, no equation bolts are cut. Okay. What about saying that? You can say it. You won't get credit for it, but you can say it. No, really, if you call them but don't say that, that's when I would ask you to drop. 
control arm mount, proper mount secured, and missing nuts and bolts control arm, proper mount secured, and missing nuts and bolts. How do you know it's a control arm? Because it's a box trailer now, flatbed. Flatbed has <laughs> Airbags. Can have airbags. Yeah, the airbags too. Flatbeds can have airbags. No, joking aside, if it's got an airbag, it is a control arm. If it's got. If it does not have an airbag, it will either be a leaf spring or a torque arm. I can go ahead and tell you, if you're on the flatbed, it is a torque arm. Robert, do you see any airbags on this trailer? Yep. Proper mounts. Upper and lower airbag mount, proper mount secured. I'm missing that's bolts. Airbag. Proper mount secured. So. Can you speak up where us humans can hear it? <laughs> <laughs> no abrasion bolts or cuts. You can tell it. No dry just paid by the hour, can't you? <laughs> Brake chambers are probably mounted security. The missing nuts or bolts. Okay. Oh, oh that's a bad day. Okay. Sure. Hose is on. Yes. Do you need nope. to tell me about them? Yep. Please do. No. Nope. Airlines are probably mounted security. No brakes, bolts, or cuts. No signs of leaks. No leaks on the airbags either. He's about to get into that. Oh, okay. All right, driver, you may continue. I already called the tandem. This is the, uh, but you're going to do it again so everybody can hear you. <laughs> again, <laughs> us humans need need higher pitch and tone. I wonder if it echoes. It's loud for me. Go ahead. Tandem sliding rail. Proper yeah. mount is secured. No missing nuts or bolts. Tandem locking arm. Proper mount is secured in the locked position. Stop being a girl. Tandem locking pins in the locked position. I can't hear you. Do my inner and outer rim. There you inner go. Inner and outer. Inner and outer. Proper mount screwed. Not missing any nothing. Not bent. Tractor broken. No legal welds. Multi purpose light, four way flasher, turn signal. And. Parking light, four way. Brake. Nope. Clearance. Not a clearance. Turn signal, parking light. ID. Identification light. There you go. Probably model secure, not cracked, nor broken, red in color. Yep. In the back of the trailer. I'm gonna check, mm -hmm. uh, check my door latches, make sure they're properly mounted and secured. Not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. <coughs> Check my door hinges, make sure they're properly mounted and secured. No missing nuts or bolts, not broken. Uh, next, I'll check, make sure I have my chains on my doors. Properly mounted and secured, not broken. <coughs> DOT tape across the back of the door. And I'm checking to make sure there's DOT, uh, DOT tape on my bumper. Bumper is not broken or damaged. Okay. M Next, I'm gonna check my identification lights right here. Driver, let me stop you there. Is there anything okay. else you'd like to tell me about that bumper? No legal that's it. Okay. Then, right. Identification lights, properly mounted secure, not cracked or broken, red in color. <coughs> Uh, off on the sides, on the left and the right, that's my uh, multi-purpose lights, four-way flashers, turn signals, brake lights, missing one again, alright, got it, four-way flashers, turn signals, brake lights, and uh, yeah, I keep forgetting that down. Is it the proper color? Yeah, red in color, not cracked, uh, not broken. cracked or broken. There you go. Then I'm going to check my brake lights, properly mounted and secure, not cracked or broken, red in color. Okay. All right, driver, let me stop you right there. Did you miss anything? Third week. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. All right. Tag light. You check my tag light, make sure it's properly mounted and secured, 
not broken. White in color and should be visible from 25 feet. Okay. Yeah. Those are your, your four-way or uh, multi-purpose lights. These are your brake lights. That's brakes there. That's, one I was That's multi-purpose. So you got to multi multi-purpose or multi-purpose light? At least once you will, yes. Yeah. So, so what was the, the inside one again? The brake light, multi-purpose light. What was the four on the multi-purpose on this side? Turn signals, emergency, li uh, emergency lights, and uh, turn signals, four-way flashers, and parking lights. Yep. This can be, depending on the trailer manufacturer, this can be a multi-purpose light, it can be an amber ABS light. If it's amber, which I'll go ahead and tell you, none of ours are, but the new trailers you get into will be. If you ever see this, people think it's on the back, it's going to automatically be red. If it's amber, it's an ABS light. But wouldn't that be on the driver's side? Be on both sides. Can be on be both. both sides. It made some man again. I think UltraCraft only puts it on drivers. Okay. At this stage, you've already done your light your light check operation. Okay. You'll be in the driver's seat. Obviously, I'll be in the passenger seat. Simplest way to do your overview: start at the top, work your way down. We have no overhead obstructions. Nothing's going to fall on me, injure me, or inhibit my ability to drive safely. Move down to this level. What's this big thing in front of us? Remember I said you need to tell me about it twice. This mm -hmm. is the second time. On the inside, it's clean. You can see through it. It's properly mounted and secured because you've got a gasket on the inside too. Okay? I'm looking through. What's those things on the corner? Uh, convict mirrors. Convict like you already mirrors. inspected them one time. Yeah. Yes. Now you need to tell me about them. They're properly adjusted so you can see out of them. Mm -hmm. Convict mirrors. Yeah. And while we're Side at it, what's the rear view? Side mirror. Same Side thing, mirror. properly adjusted so you can see out of them and drive safely. Now that we've done this area, we're going to come down. We're going to start here, go all the way across the dash. I have my gauges. Water temperature, it will rise as the truck warms up. Oil temperature, it will rise within five seconds after I start the vehicle. If not, I will shut the vehicle off. Before, because it prevent, you know, cause damage. Okay, I don't need to hear. Contrary to what everybody thinks, I don't need to hear about the RPM or the speedometer. I'm going to move over here. I have three air gauges: application, front, rear. Those are air tanks. I need to hear about. All. If you don't tell me about all three of them, I'm going to ask. What are they? Application, front, rear. Okay, They're, they should build up to between 120, 125 PSI. If we say 115 or 125, will that count? Either too? one, yeah. Okay. Either one. That's as long as you right. basically get the point across, you know it's got to have air to work. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move heater, defrost. Defrost is up here, heater's down here. You're going to check the operation, make sure it works. Everybody said, well, that's just for comfort. No. The heat may be, the defrost is, if you can't see, you can't drive. And believe me, you get up around Minneapolis in January, you're going to need your defrost. Okay? Now, do I, do I need to hear about any of this? No. no. Don't learn it if you don't have to know it. I don't need to hear about it. Now that we've done this section, no obstructions around the floor, nothing's going to get under my pedals and inhibit my ability to drive. Okay? There's one gauge that I haven't talked about. You can't see it on here. Voltmeter. Some trucks have a mechanical voltmeter. Some of them, like this one, has a dis computer display. I'm not going to make you go through it. All you need to do is remember to tell me about it. What's the voltmeter supposed to be? 13.4, 13.8. There you go. Because if you don't tell me, I'm going to ask, what is it supposed to be? That's all the gauges I need to hear about. Now that we've done this part, what's this big round thing in front of me? What's in it? City horns. City horns, City horns, air, horns. air horns. Now, of course, normally the truck will be running. I'm not cranking it so you can all hear me, but the truck will be running. Your city horns and your air horns, you need to test them. Okay? 
Now, do I need to hear about this? Yes. What do I need to hear about it? Property mountain secure. Uh, moves freely. Moves freely. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, indicator uh, works properly. Rain selector. Yeah. Rain yep. selector. Pedals. One, one to two inch free plate. Uh, property mountain is secure. Okay. Now, what's one thing that I should have done when I first got in this vehicle? I have not seat done. Seatbelt on. Seat seat on. Very no good. No abrasion bolts or cuts tightly around the body. Mine is secure. Yep. So when you get in here, you check the, uh, make sure nothing will fall and all top. that. When, yeah. At what point do you crank up? That's why I waited yeah. to do this. Okay. If you forget your seatbelt, you lose the point for no seatbelt. And then you go to crank the truck and do your safe start. Well, if you don't have your seatbelt on, you didn't do a safe start. So you don't get credit for it either. That'd be two points. Contrary to popular belief, if you forget your seatbelt, it is not an automatic failure on your pre-trip. Road test, yes. Pre-trip, no. And on your backing test, you do not have to wear your seatbelt. This is private property. You're not on a publicly maintained thoroughfare or an interstate. You do not have to wear. It's easier if you don't. You can look out your window. And you guys have all done enough backing to realize you need to look out your window, mm -hmm. right? Yes. But that's why I waited to do this to point this out. If you forget the seatbelt, that's automatically going to cost you two points. But now I have my seatbelt on. You have told me everything I need to hear about it. I'm going to do a safe start. Make sure it's in neutral. Engage my clutch or push your clutch in. Cover your brake. You don't have to push the brake. Just cover it with your foot in case it's not going to roll. But if it did. Get cranks, ease out on the clutch, and now you're going to hear the beat because you'll have to let it build your air. And at this point in time, and this is why I say do it this way, I will tell you you can rev it up to around 1,000 RPMs to let your air build up. But also, while it's building air, use this time as a review. Go through it in your mind. Have you missed anything? Because until your test is over, anything you've missed in here, you can still tell me about it. Okay? So use this time as a review. Go through. There you go. I purposely skipped it. Because that's what I was going to do. So, oh, I've missed the windshield wipers and the washer fluid. Would you check your defroster and all that now since it's running? For testing purposes, as long as you tell me about it, you're fine. Now, out in the real world, obviously, your truck would be running, but you're not going to be explaining everything you do in the real world either. No. You're just going to be doing it. But for this purposes, I waited to crank the truck so you could hear what I'm saying. Okay? Did I miss anything else? I'm not saying I did, just ask me. Because you caught it. That's, I it skipped the windshield wiper. Thank you. Indicator. Right turn signal. Left turn signal. High beams. Four ways. That's why I say use the review. Go through in your mind. Because it'll take, as you can see, a couple of minutes to get your air built up. Use that time to review. Which switch turns on the, the lights? The headlights and everything. That's for the headlights. Round knob right there. People, this is a cargo light. That's not headlights. That's that the light behind the sleeper. Okay. Round knob. That's your light. The way you'll know it. See that red light? Mm -hmm. That's how you know your lights are on. And again, your four ways. Far left. Big it just like probably most of your cars. That's four ways. What about the ABA? Until you told it. You know, you got to check it. You lie in ABN, right? ABS? Yeah, all, all, you know, you probably have one. Don't be putting me on Facebook, <laughs> man. Right? This truck don't have it. Well, you have to mention it? No, this truck don't have it. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to go through the tug test again. This is your parking brake test. I want to check my tractor. Tractor brakes. So which button do I push in? Yep. He's out on the clutch. You'll feel the resistance. Now, I'm going to re-engage my trailer brakes. 
pushing my tractor brakes because I'm checking it's my tractor brakes. brakes. He's out. Feel that? Mm -hmm. Now I want to check my service brake or my foot brake. Both buttons are in. Ease forward slightly. Foot brake works. Do I pull them out? No. Uh, Why not? Because you got to do your land. There you go. I'm just building my pressure back up. Notice still in gear, still have my clutch pushed in. That's close enough. Switch back on, two clicks. <laughs> You'll see the dash lights open up. That's my daughter's ring call. First step of the lab is what? 90 pounds of pressure. For how long? 60 seconds. What am I looking for? Uh, no more than four pounds. Yeah, four pounds. Four pounds. Four pounds. Four pounds. There we go. No more than four feet. Now, second step. Uh, fan the brake 60, 460, the buzzer should come on. Approximately 60. Like this one, it actually comes on about 80, 85. Yeah. All right, there's 60. We've got both my warning got lights. Warning. And I'll ask you to tell me when your lights come on. Uh, Last step. Uh, fan them down Phantom to 20 to 45, yep. so them will pop out. Yep. yep. What he said. It's over. Part right. is over. Now, yep. I'm going to build the pressure, and I'm going to show you how you will actually do it in real time and how fast it goes. I'm going to do it, the whole thing, but I'm not going to explain it. You guys know to follow along, I'm going to show you how fast you can actually do the whole thing. Alright, starting now. Out in the real world, we'll do that every day. That's how fast it goes. So see, it's actually quite simple. Mm -hmm. But students get petrified because the lab is a pass-fail. Mm -hmm. Two things will pretty much, what when students do fail, they either forget to turn the switch on, or after they do their tug test, they'll pull the buttons back out and forget to push them back in. Yeah. And obviously, if the buttons are already out, you can't do your lab yeah, test. Yeah. That's usually what screws people. But it's that simple.